Здравствуйте, я очень рад, что я сегодня могу здесь быть с вами. Это мой первый визит. I'm very happy to be here with you today. This is my first presentation visit to Russia. I wanted to present in Russian, but then I understood that when I studied Russian, Python was not Python was not yet invented. But a day has only 24 more or less hours. And we have just like 30 minutes for this talk. So what I'm going to talk about today, I will show you how to check the time in Python, why you shouldn't check the time too often. Uh, you should follow, check what your government does. It will be all about time zones. My name is Miroslav Šedivý. I was born in Czechoslovakia. This is the time zone of Europe, Bratislava. I studied in France, Europe, Paris, and now I work in Karlsruhe in Germany. This is Europe, Berlin. All of them is actually now Central European time or Central European summer time. But my main job is using Python to make the sunshine and the wind blow. So I am working a lot with different time zones and we are now going to see what, how the time zones uh, work and why it is such a problem to work with them. I don't do any live coding. Please, this is the time that my whole talk will refer to. It, it's almost uh, exact. Uh, so now we are on Friday, 2nd of November 2018, 15 or 3 of the standard Moscow time here in St. Petersburg in Russia. So in Python, in standard Python, if you want to get the current time, the easiest way is to use time. Time.time .time returns the Unix timestamp. It is the number of seconds since epoch, uh, since the 1st of January 1970 in UTC. Um, but with this number, we don't really know what weekday, we what time is it exactly? So we import the daytime and then ask what is the current time, daytime now, and we receive on, on a Russian computer, like on a computer that is configured for this time zone, uh, we get um, an object, a daytime object that contains year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. This was great on such a computer, but if you log on a server, that is configured for UTC, you will get a different object that is offset off by three hours here in St. Petersburg. And these two objects don't uh, carry any information about which time zone they are in. If you want to be sure that on both computers you get the same time, you have to ask UTC now, and this is the time zone uh, of UTC, the standard universal coordinated time. Actually, UTC is an abbreviation it's not an abbreviation, it's a compromise between French and English speaking countries because in English it's universal coordinated time, UCT. In French it's temps universel coordonné, TUC. And UTC is just a compromise between the two languages that is abbreviation of no language. So with UTC now you will get the current time in UTC. Um, again, without information. And if you want to have the information that we are in the UTC, you will have to use uh, the standard daytime time zone UTC object that will tell, OK, I want the current time in UTC, and it will append this uh, object uh, to the daytime object. Um, if you want to have uh, the current time here uh, in St. Petersburg, you can tell we are three hours ahead of UTC, so we will create an object daytime time delta with hours three, and you will get this information. Fortunately now, uh, St. Petersburg doesn't switch summertime, wintertime, standard time and summertime, um, but uh, in some other countries this would be not convenient because you need the information whether you are now in daylight saving time or not. That's why we are going to import a third-party library, it's PYTZ. Other possibility would be date utility Z. They are quite similar. And if you say, I want the current time in the time zone called Europe Moscow, you will get the current time with the information. We are now in the standard Moscow time and the whole information would be correct and exact. Um, there is one other thing. Okay, we know now how to check the time. Uh, I want to tell you how not to check the time too often. Because if you ask for the current day, today, it will tell you, okay, we are the 2nd of November. And then you want to know what was the date yesterday, current time, minus one day, and you will get the time yesterday. If you run these two lines after each other on one moment of the day, they will return the same result and you will not get that information because you are be in bed, bed probably, in bed. Because if the first line starts one microsecond before midnight, the second line one microsecond after midnight, they will return the same result. 
but it will happen only once a day. So you shouldn't check the time too often. We are checking for the current time twice in these uh, two lines of code. You should check for the time once and work with this object. Tell now it is the current time and then refer to this object next time. So you are looking on your watch only once and then calculating everything from this uh, object uh, later. And this, you should start or check for the time once in a um, consistent um, function, in a code that should work together, and then uh, work with this time afterwards, but with this standard, uh, with this one uh, time object. Um, there can be a case when you want to check for the time several times. For example, if you want to know how long does a more expensive operation take, so you check for the current time before the expensive operation and then after. You can use the UTC now function, but then you have to calculate the seconds. It takes a few microseconds more than you need, so this is not uh, really an optimal solution. If you ask uh, the time time, it will return just the seconds uh, since epoch, so this is, uh, the calculation is very uh, easy. Um, but imagine that the expensive operation takes a few seconds and in between the clock of your server it will update it through NTP date. So you will get wrong information because time time always looks on the clock and if the clock gets updated in between you can get some offset if your real time clock uh, was wrong. So you can use the time monotonic. Time monotonic guarantees that is always increasing incrementing uh, number of seconds and it, the beginning of this time monotoning is not important but it is always the same beginning like beginning of the process and the number of seconds will be consistent and if you are using python 3.7 or newer um, you can use even monotonic in nanoseconds it will give give you even a better information more exact number of uh, nanoseconds uh, your expensive operation took so we are now back at the time. So what is time? If you want to look at the sun, you say the sun is in the south, in the highest position, it is my noon, and then you can measure the time. And between each position, the highest position of the sun at noon, it is always 24 hours. It is not. There is equation of time. During the year, the sun oscillates between minus 15 and plus 15 uh, minutes. So the noon is not always noon, and this is where the word mean in Greenwich Mean Time comes from, because it is the mean solar noon over the year. So earlier people uh, measured the time locally, and then in the 19th century came Greenwich as the standard uh, for the world time, but it took a little bit more time to um, establish Greenwich as the zero. In France, um, at the end of 19th century, every town had their own time, local time, um, and only the uh, railroad introduced the need for a common time. It's not for the passengers, it's because if you have one track, you don't want to send two trains at the same time from two cities to the track, you have to coordinate that. Uh, and uh, they took as their standard, they took Paris and added five minutes to that. Not because like a few kilometers from Paris there will be something interesting, but because you imagine if you run for a train and you wish the train should be a little bit late, ideally by five minutes, so you don't arrive late. So these five minutes are exactly for the people who were late for the trains. And only 1911 they adapted their time to, uh, to the Greenwich time. So it would be ideal world, we have UTC in Greenwich, plus 12, minus 12 hours around the world, and in Europe it would look like that. Okay, 100 years ago the borders were a little bit different, but this is actually the ideal time zones that should be today. You have London in the middle, 15 degrees to the uh, east uh, is Prague approximately, and then other time zones. So it should look like that, but you know that um, Benelux, France and Spain, they moved, it was Hitler, uh, who moved them to, to the Central European time. And now the Central Europe is discussing what are we going to do with the daylight saving time or not daylight saving time. It should look like that. That's my vote. There is no central authority for time zones. 
there is only Internet Assigned uh, Numbers Authority, um, an organization that observes the changements of time zones and tries to reflect them and publish the best available information for everyone. Because what we have seen before, the map of Europe, that was astronomy and geography, and then it's just politics. Because every changement since then, it was just politics. And uh, Ayana is uh, trying to, uh, to follow that, uh, to observe that, and to uh, summarize the information and give unique information to everyone of us. If you um, import uh, PYTZ and ask for all time zones, there are over 500 of them. Uh, common time zones that are really used are still over 400. This is the these are the different regions in the world that had some different time zones, some different daylight saving time in, since 1970. We don't ask what was before, before, because before there was even more chaos. So you have now over 400 uh, time zones. In America, there are over 100. Europe has 60. Uh, Russia is divided a little bit between Europe and uh, Asia. Um, so in some smaller islands in Pacific, Indian Ocean, and Atlantic there are attributed to, this, to these other regions. So now imagine over 400 time zones. It looks like that. Uh, the colors represent the current time offset. And I've used six, uh, co oh, seven colors and just cycled through them. So if you see in Europe, it's yellow. In Africa, it's also yellow. So these are all the regions that have currently the same time. But it is now. It is not what was a few years ago or what will be in a few years. So this is the current situation. And this is the history of the world in the past 100 years. On the x-axis, you see the past uh, 100 years from the end of the 19th century until 2037. And um, if you turn your head to the left, in the middle, it's Greenwich. Then it is the Western Hemisphere, America. And uh, on the top, it's direction of Asia and Australia. So what you see at the beginning, the lines are really random. This was the local time in every place. There were no one hour offset. There were like random minutes and seconds of offset. And when you see stripes like that, it is daylight saving time, no daylight saving time. So for example, in the, in the top pass part, you see at the end there, are no, there is no daylight saving time. This is Russia, because Russia abandoned it a few years ago. And now the current version of, a PA, uh, of a TZ data says there will be no daylight saving time until 2037. If you introduce them again, they will reappear there but with a newer version. So if you use the current version of PYTZ, this is how the world will move uh, in the following uh, almost 20 years. Uh, there are a few lines that go through the whole graph. These are some tiny islands in Pacific that just moved from uh, one day to another. So now we are in Russia. I just extracted everything that was um, attributed uh, to Russia, all time zones. Um, you maybe recognize some larger cities. And this is now the extracted graph of uh, uh, Russian time zones. You see the epoch of uh, daylight saving time. There was some chaos in 92, 93. Um, and now, last year, they moved again. Some time zones, they moved uh, in some direction, some moved back. And this is how time zones will look like in Russia for the following almost 20 years. Um, if you just instantiate uh, a time zone object uh, of PYTZ, Europe, Moscow, you will see this 2 hours and 30 offset. So this is not the current, this is the first local time that was observed uh, over 100 years ago. Um, for Berlin, it's like 53 minutes ahead of uh, Greenwich, uh, Paris, uh, 9 minutes. And London is one, one minute back, because London is not Greenwich. Um, if you just instantiate a um, daytime object and tell TZ info is this PYTZ object, it will be wrong because the functionality of PYTZ is uh, that it has to be called as a function. I will show you immediately now. If you are using day due to TZ, I think you can instantiate uh, it uh, directly um, as uh, such an object. So you have to take 
uh, PYTZ uh, Europe Moscow object and then localize and then it will recognize uh, which uh, which times which time zone offset it should take. Um, let's have a look at the TZ data uh, file that you can download for free. This is the version from May. They didn't update it in between, I believe. Um, there are some programs in Perl, Oak, some uh, shell scripts, but the most important, the most interesting files are called Europe, Asia, North America, South America. You see Europe over 160 kilobytes, Asia 130. This is very interesting reading. If you have in the evening nothing to do, just read it through, it's really amazing. Because this is the history of Europe of the past 100 years, or Asia or other countries or the other continents, um, that will show you how the wor world took care of their time zones and how Earth sometimes stopped rotating and turned back one hour or ahead. Let's have a look at Moscow. This is some code, and it explains that at the beginning, uh, until 1880, uh, Moscow uh, time zone was 2 hours and 30 minutes ahead and 17 seconds. And then in the 20s, it moved a little bit in the 90s. 2011 was daylight saving time, 2014 no daylight saving time, and this is what you are using now. Now you are 3 hours ahead. If we are look at other time zones, for example, Istanbul, there were a little bit more movements, 2011, 14, 15. And these files and this data um, archive are not only such codes that can be interpreted by PYTZ or other libraries, there are also texts from the mailing list of this data. Uh, this mailing list is a um, place where people can submit information I have read in the newspaper, they will change daylight saving time, they will introduce it, they will abolish it. Um, someone writes, oh, I found some archive that in Russia in 1921, in February, they just skip one or two hours. And this is the interesting information. So, for example, for Istanbul, there is a information from the 10th of March 2011 uh, that uh, they will change uh, uh, to the summertime one day later just because of a national-wide exam. Now imagine this information appears on the 10th of May March. Someone has to introduce it there, deploy, distribute it all around the world, and everybody has to understand that uh, Turkey uh, decided to introduce the daylight saving time just one day later than you um, planned before. Um, 2014, there were some Turkish local election, the second comment is from Randall Schwartz. I flew, uh, was flying to, to Istanbul, and the systems didn't know that they wanted to move to daylight saving time later. So it is not just the radio that tells you, okay, the daylight saving time will come one day later. There are all the systems, your computer servers, embedded systems on the airport that print uh, the air ticket, the flight ticket uh, in the local time. And they have to know that there will be a change. 2015, uh, in, uh, in September, they decided that they will uh, move the end of the daylight saving time because of some energy savings a little bit later. 2016, they will stay in the daylight saving time in winter, then not, then again yes, then not. These are just the comments. The code has changed in between. The current version is there is no change. Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, they will advance by 30 minutes on the 1st of May, announced two weeks before. And then the second uh, news is published in official Gazette, so someone has to follow the official newspapers in Spanish, in this case. Porto Prince, this is Haiti. Haiti is not far away from equator. In summer they have 13 hours of daylight, in winter they have 11 hours of daylight, and still, every year, they discuss should we introduce daylight saving time or not? And they discuss it always in March. So are they going to change it or not? And still they say we have to, to save energy. They don't save energy. Montevideo in Uruguay. Uruguay wins the prize for the strangest peacetime manipulation of the rules. International rise of the price of oil. Okay, better use of national tourist attractions. So they just advanced it again. Pyongyang, uh, North Korea, 
2015, they moved from nine hours ahead to eight hours 30. Again, one, it was even one week ahead. And now in May, they moved back. Again, five or six days of notice. It appears to be the front page story at the top of the rightmost column. There is a link, a PDF file in Korean, and there is somewhere a text that explains that they are going to move their time zone. In May, I tried it. Even later, in June, I tried it in Python. I asked, what is the current time in Pyongyang? And they told me, OK, we are, they are 8 hours and 30 minutes ahead. OK, on the same computer, I asked it directly in the shell. And it told me they are 9 hours ahead on the same computer, the current, uh, the cu current system of uh, Arch Linux. And then I checked my PYTZ is the fourth version of 2018, and my TZ data that is used by Shell is the fifth version of the year. In between, it has changed. And on Arch Linux, PYTZ has its own um, copy of uh, TZ data library and database, TZ data database. And uh, the TZ data has, was on its own. So now imagine that you have a PostgreSQL or some database that also uses time zones, that you have some other programming languages that also try to use their own um, versions of uh, TZ data, and they should be compatible. But even on one system, sometimes it is not compatible. In between, uh, the PYTZ has been updated on, uh, on Arch Linux. On Android 7, it is the 2016 uh, edition of uh, F is the sixth uh, version of, uh, of TC data in the year 2016, so now over two years old. And then imagine all your devices, how are they updated? Imagine if you say I write a program, I run it in some Conda environment or in Docker, and I don't up touch it, it's perfectly tested, it will work always, and it uses time zones, no, it won't. If you are reading data with a standard uh, daytime uh, library, uh, you can define if you have uh, some uh, uh, time zone information uh, in which format it is, and it will read correctly with the offset. It will not identify in which time zone you are. If you are using uh, data util parser, you can even create your own uh, time zone mappings. So, for example, here I created SP as San Petersburg, uh, Petersburg and uh, told it is the same time as uh, Europe Moscow. And uh, my text is 02.11.2018 with SP at the end, and it will interpret it as uh, uh, St. Petersburg or Moscow time. If you have data without time zone information, still, if you are in Central Europe, you can still check end of March, end of October to see whether there are some, um, some repeating times in uh, October or some whole of one hour in March. Um, if you have anything that has to do with solar data, you can check with uh, sunrise, sunset, whether the times um, of uh, sunrise, sunset uh, uh, match um, your data, and then you can try to guess uh, the time zone. It is it. If you use uh, Arrow or any other convenient uh, libraries, everything has to be based on TZ data. You are not going to uh, develop uh, your own uh, time zone. So you have to respect the uh, TZ data library. In uh, PostgreSQL, as I told, they use their own lab edition of uh, TZ data. So if you have a database server and you use uh, the timestamp um, uh, type with uh, time zone, you have to be make sure that uh, your uh, TZ data library is uh, up to date. Oh, there is one uh, nice time zone called AOE, anywhere on Earth. This is not in uh, TZ data. It uh, simply means that uh, if you are uh, organizing a conference and you want to do some deadline for anyone in the world, you just say, OK, I want time zone anywhere on Earth. And on the 2nd of November, anywhere on Earth, it means that it is valid until anywhere on Earth there is still the 2nd of uh, November, which is usually in Samoa, in Pacific, and uh, in UTC it means the next day at 11 o'clock, and uh, here in St. Petersburg or in the Moscow time, it is the second day, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. What are the best practices? Don't invent your own time zones. Don't hard code any rules. Keep your time zone lips up to date, or at least monitor 
uh, the versions that you are using. If you are, if you get some time information, convert it to UTC as soon as possible. On the other way, convert it to uh, an output to some other time zone as late as possible. Then follow what your government does, and if you see any information that concerns uh, switch of daylight saving time, introduction, abolishment, just inform TZIT IANA org. They will tell you thank you. Um, if you have some future local events, try to store them in some text form, like every day at 10 o'clock local time, because you cannot convert that to UTC immediately, and then convert them to daytimes as late as possible. And the best, avoid time zones if you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know what? Questions, right? Always the first one. Thank you very much for the amusing talk. Um, is there any reason why the TSET data database does not contain leap seconds? Because they had to be handled separately, right? Uh, leap seconds are valid everywhere. Leap seconds are physical. Time zones are political. So, if you, leap seconds are introduced at the same time yeah, everywhere. I know, but if I, like, the day there's a leap second, if I get that date and I add one second, I cannot go to the following day. I should have, like, 23, 59, 60 yeah. seconds. And that's not happening if you use the standard date, time, and T set, and etc. Right? Yeah. Uh, leap seconds, they are not handled uh, by PYTZ as, well, as far as I know. So. It's not in that, that. I don't know why it is not there. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, in your slides, you mostly mention uh, code examples which try to find uh, what are local time if we are today. Uh, for example, I need to figure out uh, what was um, uh, the time uh, written in uh, some local time in some part of the world, uh, and uh, as you say, time zones are political, so they change uh, frequently and uh, unsystematically. Uh, uh, does this library uh, can figure out uh, the historical changes? So uh, I can, for example, find what was the actual date, uh, like 15, 15 years ago, uh, if I want uh, it representation from local time to UTC, for example. If you have a local time 50 years ago, you can, with PYTZ, you can convert it. Um, if 50 years ago there was daylight saving time transition, like it was not, it was ambiguous, um, it will throw uh, an exception, raise an exception, and uh, there is a possibility that you, if you know whether it was daylight saving time or not, you can define it. Thanks. And there is even in the PYTZ, uh, the ob ob time zone objects, they have an attribute, something like UTC transition times, so you can even see the history every time uh, it has changed. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yes, another question. Uh, so, for instance, you said that future events should be stored in text representation and should be converted back as late as possible. Is there any good practice for the cases where, for instance, you store the time and time zone, but then the time zone splits in two, for instance? Like when a Central European time zone is reverted back and there are all, all those new time zones, and which one is, uh, was the correct time? So, you cannot just store 10 o'clock at Central European time, you have to somehow store position, or what, what is a good practice for Position, you? okay, you, you have seen there are over 500 time zones in the world, and even Europe is divided. Every state has, it, has its own time zone. Germany has two. There are two, both of them start with a B. One is Berlin, the other one is not Bonn. The other is Büdingen, it's a small exclave uh, in uh, Switzerland, 
that has introduced uh, summertime or daylight saving time one year later than the rest of Germany. They introduced it together with Zurich, with, uh, with Switzerland. So if, if you uh, want to store the information in text form, you say you are now in Berlin, like Germany. Of course, if Germany splits in Bavaria or, and the rest, uh, there is no Munich time zone. And so they would have to introduce the Munich time zone. But Thank it you. is something that we don't await. Now, now we await that we are going to switch between daylight saving time and standard time until 2037. And even you know that the European Union wants to abolish it next year or in two or three years. Yeah. Um, thank you for your talk, Miroslav. I want to talk about when you show how Russian time was changed. You, you mean this history graphic? Uh, yeah. Sh yep. Show me yep. this, the table. No, this, yeah. No, 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 table, data. A table? Uh, console, console output. This. Output. Yep. Uh, where is, uh, in previous century, Russia changed not only hours, they changed the days, large one, one day. Uh, but uh, this is data. Which, which year was it in, do you know, do you remember? Uh, uh, 17, maybe. 1917. 16 or 19? <laughs> or is it just a uh, change of uh, one hour? Or one yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, you see in the third column, you see Russia. The word Russia. Yep. Russia, Russia is a rule. So we, would, we should have a look at other part of this uh, file where the rules are defined and it is possible that with Russia there would be some uh, some other rules. Okay, thank you. store uh, the future events uh, separately uh, it's like dates uh, time and time zone uh, doesn't make sense and uh, or not in your opinion and uh, uh, in uh, UTC we stored only uh, on the, the previous uh, pre previous events uh, another question <coughs> uh, did you experience any problems uh, on conversion uh, in conversion of uh, times between UTC and local time zones uh, in Python. Uh, I personally experienced uh, such a problem in conversion to uh, California uh, time zone, P PTC, bec uh, because there is a, a time zone with minus seven uh, minutes and back it converts uh, wrong. So uh, no, not in the... You are using, uh, you told me California, did you use America, San Francisco, or uh, America, or, or did you use some? Los Angeles, America, uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, okay. No, yeah. because, because, but you didn't use this PST P, 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 or Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, 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 yeah. The problem with this abbreviation of three letters is that they are not unique. You shouldn't use them. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we uh, decided to uh, rely on Postgres conversion, and it worked. But probably, probably there is some confusion. Uh, yeah. PostgreSQL stores uh, day, day, day times in UTC. If you yeah, tell it yes. it's but, this but time it in Moscow, it, it will able, it huh? is able to convert from UTC to yeah. uh, to the local time zone. Mm -hmm. no, right. But uh, well, when I, I when I work in Europe, I always define that I am in Berlin. Excuse me. Berlin or Paris doesn't matter now. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I did. Um, I mean, I mean, if I'm somewhere in Eastern Europe, like Bucharest. If I have some data from southeastern Europe, it is one hour ahead, of, so I say it's in Europe, Bucharest. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but I don't use CET or EET, like Central European time or East European time, because I'm never sure whether these three letters are already used somewhere else around the world. Oh, yeah. That's okay. not unique. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I have a question about the updating of this TC data package. So basically how we loads, how it uh, finds information inside, so it loads on when application starts, if I have a long running applications, or it goes there each time you ask, or how I can I, know it. Uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't have su such long running uh, because if you have, you know. <laughs> yeah. They usually should load like Python objects and then hold them in the memory, I believe. Yeah, it's not big, so. Yeah. It will be even bigger and bigger because it has to remember the whole history. Yeah, but the memory is cheaper and cheaper, so yeah. that's problem. <laughs> no more questions? Right, so you need to pick one, one question. Uh, so, yep. <laughs> Which was the first one? <laughs> Woohoo! Congrats! Thank so, thank you then. Thank you thank very you. much.